Welcome, everyone. We are here once again to talk a little bit about our Porsche Restoration Challenge 2024 entry, our 1985 911 Carrera that has been backdated to 1971 ST specs with the help of our dear friend, client, customer, and partner, Dr. Kim. So the excitement for this project this year, obviously, in addition to working with a great partner such as Dr. Kim, the Sonderwush program, when combined with the Porsche Restoration Challenge, gave us a new arena to really showcase what is possible when you add the wishes of a great enthusiast and one of our clients with the capabilities of my shop, with the abilities of my sales team, with my marketing team, and really bring it all together into an all-encompassing experience. Not just a car, not just a purchase of another vehicle for your collection, but an entire experience that could not be achieved anywhere else without the collaboration of all these great talents that I have around me that I've able to amass around me. 1985 911 Coupe, uh, the car was used as a track weapon by one of our good friends and clients. We had to, at the last moments, procure another power plant for the car. A week later, I had an engine in a crate coming from California being shipped out here. I'm tracking this thing on a rail car till it shows up. And right now that engine is sitting as a 3.8 liter. It's an M64 motor, came out of a 964, sleeved to a 3.8, individual throttle body, standalone engine management, fiberglass shroud, it's a twin spark car. We went to coil on plug, but a unique way of doing coil on plug, which is still gonna remain the aesthetic of a 12 point distributor cap, which sort of is a little shocking to some who've never seen it, but for us that lived through cars within the 70s, that was like a that was a street that was a street rod thing, you know, to 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 use those types of other parts in the car. But originally, in a Porsche engine, obviously, um, they're going back into the car. The interior, also some custom cues in there as well. Um, we had one of our interior vendors do some tremendous work. Dr. Kim had a big hand in how that interior looked. Right. I mean, the interior for a 911 ST should be lightweight because that was the ethos of a 911 ST. So we wanted to keep it lightweight by keeping a nice, beautiful, exposed paint, very little sound deadening. Um, <laughs> None. Yeah, no, no sound editing. <laughs> but you know, we did want to make it, it an aesthetically it pleasant place. Yes. Yeah, so mm -hmm. so for that we went with um, some leather and then we uh, chose uh, orange and black Pepita. Uh, the reason being that's one of the patterns that are kind of, when you think Pepita, you think Porsche, one of the original vintage finishes. And we did, and we were able to find one that was uh, orange, white, and black, mm -hmm. which went perfectly with our Gulf livery. And, but my favorite part, even above and beyond the Pepita, is the headliner. Oh, the headliner. When we came it. upon that headliner, we were talking and we just happened to find yeah. an, a brown Alcantara headliner, not just any brown Alcantara headliner. Cognac. Cognac and yeah. it had perforations. Yes, I wanted the per I wanted yeah. the perforation because I remember cars being built by my father yeah. in the yeah. 80s, in yeah. the 1970s yeah. and 1960s yeah. Porsches. Yeah. And they always had that ivory right. perforated right. headliner. Right. And I felt like we had to keep that in the car. So right. finding a Cognac Alcantara yeah. version of that, right. that was like the universe right. stepped in again. Some key visual cues on the car that make you think and make you realize it all is not stock under the deck. Lid. You know, we got custom gauges made by Palo Alto Speedometer and uh, the speed number goes to 180 and the uh, RPMs go to 10,000. I could not live without a classic 71911 without the green gauges. Oh, yes. Very classic yes. look. We had the hardest time ever getting a pedal box for the car. So a G50 and a G body backdated to a 71. The only thing that really worked was a period correct G50 pedal box, which was unavailable and impossible to find. So decided to go anything worth doing is worth overdoing. So we went to a full set of race pedals on the car. There's no fiberglass anywhere on this car. Mm. It is a steel fendered ST done by a gentleman who runs a shop, Gabriel's Autosport, who this is not the first time that he's done steel flares. We sent them a completely naked, bare piece of metal chassis with no rubber, no plastic, no wiring, anything, anything. It was a bare piece of metal. We had Iceman Blasting come in and we blasted the entire chassis with dry ice. We have a great team. We have a great team of technicians, a great team of parts guys that were Amazing. able to find basically whatever came up in our head. Whatever we couldn't find, we made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's a fair amount of custom metal work on the car as well, which we'll showcase. Um, and uh, if it was not for the brains of Russ and Matt there, yes. Yeah. I think that me and you would have been lost yeah. in parts catalogs. Yes. Right? So <laughs> I'll imagine. So it is definitely a team sport. You know, it's not something that only one person can do. And luckily, I have that talent here at the store. Yeah, the team is definitely here. Something that we're used to doing. 